When I was just seven years old, I was admitted to hospital. I woke one night around three in the morning with a really sharp pain in my right hip. And I was scared. So I decided the best thing to do was to go and wake up my parents right at that instant. Now, as I hopped out of bed, the pain got worse. And I remember I eventually couldn't wait bare on that leg and had to crawl up the hallway. Now, thankfully, after numerous tests and an x-ray, I was given the all clear and allowed to go home. However, with no diagnosis or explanation for the cause of my pain. Now, being the youngest of five, my week stint in hospital was put down to attention seeking by my brothers and sisters. Especially when they saw the new teddy bear school bag I picked up in the hospital gift shop. <coughs> to them, I had no evidence for pain. No broken bone, bruise or a mark. Now, pain is, of course, invisible and untouchable. It's defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience that relates to actual or potential tissue damage. <coughs> now, there's a key word in this definition, potential. That means we can feel pain just by thinking about a painful experience. Now, there are two major types of pain, acute pain and chronic pain. Acute pain is the pain you get when you stub your toe or you twist your ankle. It's a signal to pay attention to the part of the body that's sore and to change your behavior to protect it. Now, treatments like medication and rest usually help. And normally, once that painful area is healed, that pain goes away. Well, chronic pain is very different. Chronic pain is pain that's experienced on a daily basis for more than three months. And it may arise from initial injury, like a broken arm. But even after that bone heals, pain can still remain. In other words, it's not serving any purpose. In this case, we know there's a problem with the pain signaling system. And treatments that would normally work, like medications, don't always seem to help. Now, chronic pain, it's estimated in Ireland that 40% of the population are suffering with it. And it's costing the economy 4.7 billion euro a year. Now, I think you'll agree, for a small country, that's a lot of money. Now, although the economic costs associated with chronic pain are easily measured, the physical and emotional distress that it brings each patient, well, that's never fully captured. Me, age seven, well, that's been my worst experience of pain to date, but I know many others aren't so fortunate. I want to tell you about somebody. Let's call him Sean. So Sean is 35 and he loves Manchester United. He's a five-year-old son, Luke. Now, four years ago, Sean was in a car accident and that left him paralyzed from the waist down. That means he can't feel or move his legs. Now, each week in Ireland, one person will find themselves in a similar situation to Sean. And globally, the World Health Organization estimates that up to half a million people can suffer a spinal cord injury. The three leading causes, car accidents, falls, and violence. But getting back to Sean, what do you think he finds is the most difficult aspect of his new injury? That he can't play soccer with his son like he used to. That he's difficult to go into the toilet. Or that he now needs to check everywhere he goes just to make sure it's wheelchair accessible. Well, ask Sean and he'll tell you, it's none of these things. It's pain. You're going to find this hard to believe. But after a spinal cord injury, 40% of patients will experience pain described as burning and stabbing in legs or arms they can't feel or move. Think of the injustice here. Sean has constant pain in legs that he can't feel. This is the insult added to his injury. Now, this pain is beyond comprehension to those of us who don't have it. But I've heard patients firsthand describe it as if someone was placing their hand in a hot, deep fat fryer, or as if someone was wrapping their leg in barbed wire every day. This is called neuropathic pain, and it's caused by damage to your somatosensory system. So you're probably thinking, what's a somatosensory system? Well, most of you in this room have a Facebook account. Well, I don't know about you, but every day on Facebook, I'm thrown so much content. And some of it's useful and interesting, and well, let's face it, most of it's not. Well, think of your somatosensory system. It's like your body's own Facebook account. It gives you lots of information about your body. 
some of it's useful. Like to take your hand off that hot plate. And some of it's not so useful, like the feeling of glasses resting on your nose. Well, after a spinal cord injury, Sean's legs are not sending messages of information to his brain anymore. But what we know can happen is a damaged area of the spinal cord can start to send messages of pain to the brain, which it registers as pain in the legs. <coughs> Think of it like someone hacks your friend's Facebook account and starts sending you lots of spam messages. We also know that everyone's brain is constantly changing and remodeling itself based on the information it receives and the demand that's placed on it. Now, this is called neuroplasticity. Well, after a spinal cord injury, as you can imagine, the brain goes through lots of changes because it's not getting the same level of information about the body that it once was. We know that this reduced sensory information from the body can also lead to the production of pain. Well, now you have a better idea how someone like Sean can have pain in legs that he can't feel. What can we do? What can we do to help people like Sean? Well, you might be thinking pain medications. And yes, medications can lead to reductions in the pain intensity felt, but they don't remove it. And many patients have to report discontinuing their use due to unacceptable side effects like dizziness, drowsiness, and constipation. Chronic pain, in most cases, is relentless. So we need to look at treatments that help patients to cope with their pain like cognitive behavioural therapy. For the last 25 years, studies have shown that treatments like cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT, in addition to medications, is the foundation of chronic pain management in the general population. CBT teaches an awareness of the link between the body and brain and how our thoughts affect our emotions and our behaviours. In terms of pain management, it can help patients to think differently about their pain and how they manage it. Now, in spinal cord injury, we know that there's limited research investigating its use, and it's not being used routinely by patients. Last year, we carried out a national survey of people with spinal cord injury pain in Ireland and found that only 3% were using CBT. Now, my PhD is changing this. Last year, we went on to test a CBT pain management programme in the National Rehabilitation Hospital in Dublin, and it involved teaching patients different ways of thinking about and managing their pain and practical strategies like goal setting, exercise, and relaxation to create a pain toolbox for patients. Patients had significant improvements in their mood and quality of life after the programme. Sean took part, and here are his words about the impact it had on his life. I do the exercises and the relaxation. It helps a lot. My mood was very bad and I didn't want to go out with friends. It's much better now. I can now manage my pain better. Now, for the next part of my PhD, I'm testing an online version of this programme, so it can be accessible to patients all over Ireland and potentially all over the world. But it's not just about the participation in a pain management programme. We need to look at the bigger picture. These strategies have to be employed for life. In our national survey, we had over 600 responses of people with spinal cord injuries in Ireland. And we found that neuropathic pain has a massive negative impact on quality of life. Interestingly, when we looked at the predictors for experiencing neuropathic pain, we found that the strongest predictor was unemployment. Unemployment overall was high at 61%. Now, as much as we all dread our nine to five days and rejoice when the holidays come, meaningful mental engagement and activity is key to leading a fulfilling and happy life. We know after spinal cord injury, there's physical challenges to returning to previous employment and social activities. But we know, and it's well documented, that less pain disability and distress is experienced when you have supportive friends, family, and work colleagues. Occupying the mind helps to distract from the pain experience and pushes it into the background. A societal shift needs to occur. Yes, more people are surviving life-changing events like stroke, cancer, and spinal cord injury. But are we paying enough attention to their reintegration into society after these catastrophic illnesses? Maybe if we were more accepting of people with spinal cord injuries and other disabilities in terms of employment and social participation, well then maybe they could cope better with their new life situation and it could have a positive impact on their pain. Like I said, 40% of the Irish population 
are suffering with chronic pain. Look around the room right now. That's potentially two out of every five people sitting here. Now, yes, we can all recognize a broken bone or a bruised face, but are we understanding of those who are suffering with chronic pain and silence? Paralysis is still not curable, but spinal cord injury pain can be made more manageable. And my PhD can help more people like Sean cope with their pain, the insult added to their injury. Thank you very much.